start on the thingy? Yes, I should be. I'm just pulling up the game so I can have, like, the rosters in front of me. Sounds good, sounds good. Yeah, wow. Knights of the Blazing Sun have a 25% uh, spell resist. Yes. Knights of the Blazing Sun are as good as Corn Knights, baby. The no, they're 10% more Sounds spell good. resist than Corn Knights. Yeah, wow. Knights of the Blazing Sun have a okay, 25%. Yeah, yeah. It, people on stream, you're going to be hearing our voices like two times for a second there. I was checking Blood Penguin's audio compared to mine. Um, he's He's very, very hearable though i'm gonna be loud so i'll turn myself down a little bit there we go hopefully that's enough uh what up real quick warning for the people in vod land or the people that are here nice and early this is gonna be a podcast format i'll occasionally just click on the unit that blood penguin and i are talking about but i'm not gonna like put a bunch of stuff on screen to be visually entertaining that just seems like a waste of everybody's time so throw this on play a different game on your other monitor or just minimize youtube and listen but this is a it's more of a podcast format than a than a real spectacle so don't don't complain to me <laughs> why aren't you playing quick battles in the background because i'm listening to blood penguin god damn it all right uh yeah that's the spiel i got if you have not been around this channel for literally ever I think it was almost two years ago was the last one we did. We used to do interviews with faction mains where you could write your questions ahead of time and then I go through them and compile them into ones that are similar and then we ask them to the pro so you can get your questions asked about a faction. Uh, with our whole coaching system, it felt kind of obsolete, but apparently people really wanted it back. It won, a, it won a vote. So we're here and I thought it was appropriate to try and game the youtube algorithm a bit where i'm like hey kislev just got a dlc empire is gonna get a dlc do i know somebody that speaks english plays both those factions and recently won a very big tournament with one of those factions hey blood penguin plays empire he won the faction war on him just a, just a month and a half ago let's get that guy so we got that guy hi blood penguin hello we're gonna ask him some questions some serious, some silly, but uh, yeah. Let's start off with a personal question. From NC Stead and RTK is the Wild Platypus, with names like Blood Penguin and Plague Penguin, do you like or hate penguins? Can you explain where the name comes from? And can't you just wash off the blood and be a normal penguin? Oh, uh, I do like penguins. Uh... The original Blood Penguin is my uncle. Uh, I told my uncle that I wanted to make an account for League of Legends. Good game, but, good game. Uh, and I didn't have a name for it, so he was just workshopping names, and that's one that we came up with that wasn't taken by somebody already. I like and it. the way that Plague Penguin came about is when Warhammer 3 started, uh, I had this idea that I would change my name uh, depending on which faction I was playing for, like Chaos Factions. So it would be uh, Blood Penguin for Corn, uh, Pain Penguin for Slanesh, Plague Penguin for Nurgle, and uh, Plan Penguin for Zinch. And the first tournament I did was one of your tournaments, actually, for all Skaven Civil War. And I picked the Plague. So I was like, oh, this is a perfect time to switch my name to Plague Penguin. But after I switched it, I, I thought, and my brother also agreed with me, that Plague Penguin's just a better name than Blood Penguin. So I just have not switched it since. I, I I disagree. I think Blood Penguin is the best, but you know, sure. Sure. My opinion doesn't matter, which is fine. Oh, Plague oh, Penguin I... is pretty good. Out of the ones I haven't seen you use, I actually do like Pain Penguin. That one's really good. Pain Penguin. 
right. Or it was going to be, or it could have been uh, Blood Pain Gwen. That was another workshop name. But then that's mixing him. Because then that's like, what are you playing Slanesh and Corn in a 2 Or it could be Pleasure Pain Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds very slaneshy, though. It does sound very slaneshy, but it's like blood penguin. So far, all the rest of them, you've had like good dichotomies of like penguin, not usually an intimidating creature, but then some kind of negative adjective attached to it, like blood penguin, pain penguin, plague penguin, like pleasure penguin. You're just like, hey, did you get lost, little buddy? What are you doing here? <laughs> this is the wrong place for you. <laughs> All right, I like it. I like it. Uh, Lazy Captain asks, Sotek or Sigmar? Seems like a silly question, considering yeah, who you it are. is a silly question. One of them is like the God Emperor of Man, and the other is some like heretic snake. All right, you're not even the main god of your faction. Get out of here. Sigmar is the best. Now let's start start leading into the more serious questions. Hellion asked, which factions do would you think uh, have the advantage, or do you prefer to play? Is it a faction with wide unit variety, or a roster with a smaller roster, but like better on average units? And the two examples I could think of would be like, Norska has a tiny roster, but some of the most cost-effective units in their slot in the whole game. Whereas like, the Empire, for example, is a huge roster with a bunch of average or slightly better than average units in their tier. But having all the options is what makes you strong. So I tend to like having the variety of options more just because uh, I like when all you build an army and all the pieces work together that allow you to win the game as opposed to just building around like one centerpiece which mm -hmm. is why I play Empire not like Lizard Men but uh that being said like Norska is a fun faction I like to have factions that have like a clear idea behind how you play them and how you win the game so the Empire is like a faction where you have the cavalry and the infantry support the ranged units. Everything is working together, but none of those units individually are fantastic. Mm. Where Norska, every unit has some amount of punch to it. And that's... The fact that they are two distinct factions is what I really like about it. Which is why, like, the multiple chaos gods, it's harder for me to enjoy that just because there's not as much uh, uniqueness between the rosters. Come on, man. Marauders are my favorite unit. I love Marauders of blank. <laughs> All my Basic frontlines marauders, are marauders. Or Norskin Marauders. Or do you like to mark those Marauders? <laughs> See, the joke there is that all those factions are, like, the same. Mmm, <laughs> Marauder Frontline, Marauder Horsemen backing them up for some mobility and some Chaos Knights. What faction am I talking about? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. Alright, alright. Let's get out of the DLC stuff, since that's what people really want to hear. Uh, from myself, Michaelum, Butcherbird, Sirkroot, and Cyrus, a combined question of... What three units for the Empire would you want from Thrones of Decay? Name at least one multi-model and one single entity. Okay, so... The unit that I'm both looking forward to and a little bit afraid of are the uh, Hawkland Long Rifles. So, I'm a little bit afraid because I'm afraid they'll be like Giselles, which would on the Empire, maybe be a little toxic. I swear to God, if another <laughs> faction steals my Gisales, let me I, be special, damn it. Yeah, I would like them to not, like, 
make them good against like cavalry, like make them snipers, and they don't like just kill infantry all over the place. Mm -hmm. I would much prefer them to not have penetrating rounds, but uh, they hit reasonably hard. But I'm afraid that they're just gonna be just like Gisales, except that the Empire front line doesn't fold like a piece of paper. Uh-huh. So, uh, that is the unit that I'm the most, uh, like, I, I like the idea of having the long-range rifles, but I'm afraid of what it will be. Then they have the, oh, what are they called? The Nuln Ironsides, I think is a unit that, uh, is people think might be in the game, which I don't know if they're going to make them armored handgunners or like closer to blunderbusses. Mm -hmm. Either way, that, that sounds really cool. Not something that the Empire really needs, but cool. And oh, single entity. Uh, the only one that I really want is the Celestial Hurricane, not because I think it'll be good, but because I don't want the land ship. That seems dumb. We already have a steam tank. It's not that good. <laughs> You're not making any friends. Yeah, I know. I, I, I understand that that's like a controversial opinion, but that land ship is... We don't need single entities. If we want single entities, we'd want the steam tank to get buffed. Oh man, but... the best Empire player in the world. I wonder what he's saying about my favorite faction. Dude, <laughs> fuck the land ship. <laughs> Everybody wants the land ship is wrong. Yeah, I... <laughs> I think that the last thing that we need is another blow-ass machine that shoots cannon balls in a single direction. That's fair. But... As, like, if you want to count, like, Elspeth, who's probably the lord, uh, if you want to count her as a single entity, I think that that's a lot cooler than the land ship. And I hope that she has a good niche in the Empire roster. I'm a little afraid just because a powerful caster melee dragon lord could be very strong but if she doesn't have any access to healing and if she's a little expensive then she might have a good niche of bringing a powerful dragon caster character but you need to be careful with her no one asks me anything but i would probably want the knights of more um they're foot knights of the death god so they'd probably get armor piercing magic damage insanely high armor and Don't uh really have knights of war i think they're one of those weird electric count units yes they are yeah but they're they they're literal en they're literal empire knights but in the lore <laughs> that i've read at least the knights of more are like they're almost exclusively on foot like okay anybody in the empire can physically get on a horse and ride around <laughs> but they don't go into battle on the horses they go into battle on foot, and they usually stand around priests of more, especially when you're dealing with vampire counts, and the priests of more are, like, putting the bodies to, like, eternal rest and whatever. Usually have four or five knights of more standing around just waiting for vampires to come cause a fuss. Like, I don't know. They're great sword badasses. Question for Blood yeah. Penguin, why does no one ask how is anything? <laughs> yeah. So I, I would like that. I was also talking to Cyrus. Something that could be cool is take aspiring champions like the, the style and do a witch hunter cadre. So it's like... Oh, yeah, that could be cool. Yeah, it's kind of a mix of aspiring champions and man-eater pistols where it's just like, here's 12 hybrid units. They need to have enough... They need to have enough missile strength to be annoying if you just ignore them. And then if you go fight them, they have some pretty solid melee stats. But of course, since it's Witch Hunters, they'd have low armor, not like literally aspiring champions. But I think that could be kind of fun. And they've actually done pretty well with those in game three. Like Maneater Pistols are a good unit. 
not overpowered, but they're good. The Severed Claw are a really, really good unit, so it's like, oh, okay, maybe if they did that, it wouldn't be a terrible meme unit like the original Aspiring Champions were. Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought about that, but that actually would does sound like it'd be cool. Witch Hunter Cadre. Um, bum. You mentioned Elspeth von Draken, so let's just hop over there. From Mouses, the Empire DLC Lord is all but confirmed at this point to be Elspeth von Draken, since she is Tarmacon's rival. She's a big Dragon Rider melee world beater character who has the lore of death. What do you think of her upcoming addition for the factions? You kind of went into it that you yeah. hope she doesn't have healing, but like... Yeah, is... So, right now, all the Empire Legendary Lords, at least, are in a pretty good spot of... I think all of them are takeable. And they all have their own niche. But, uh... Her... Addition to not, like upset the balance would need to be that she can't be super cheap like she probably shouldn't be cheaper than like Carl Franz without his kit because Carl Franz also needs a healer to go with him mm -hmm. but if she doesn't have healing for herself and she could be in a fine state because you can have her be a decent uh, melee combatant and then she compensates for that by being a caster and also having dragon breath attacks so as long as she's fairly priced I think that she's going to be a good addition to the empire roster that being said that's if she's not also like completely overpowered insane uh melee stats amazing uh magic and wins regenerations like barring that i think she's fine gotcha and uh tequila sunset actually brings up a good point that i hadn't thought about before he asked it uh ca seems to be going with a template of a legendary hero for each dlc faction who would you like see uh to see brought in for the empire who do you think they'll bring so it's like who would you like to see and who do you actually think is going to be there? So, I would like to see um, either, oh man, now I got to think of their names. It's Kurt Helborg, I believe is the Reichsmarshal. Yeah, he is. He, yeah, he would be uh, a cool addition. Uh, also, the Imperial Standard Bearer, his Ludwig... Schwartzhelm? Yes. He would he's another character that I would uh like to see and those are characters that could just be uh more for like holding the line, inspiring the troops uh and rallying them to make them fight harder. I think cuz that's what I think that the empire is all about is like holding the line and then uh second wins of like as your troops start to rally. Um, I think, though, they're going to add Theodore, oh man, the griffin riding, uh, or the demi-griff riding champion of Nuln. Theodore Boo. something. Boo. He's the one who killed Tamaran in lore. Boo. A Bruckner. Sounds yeah. like a loser. He's not the yeah, real... He... He's not the real OG. Yeah, I think that he is going to be the Lord, though. He is a... He rides a named demigriff that causes terror in tabletop. Uh, he's just a fantastic duelist, is his thing. Which would be fine. Uh, that's not, like... I like the demigriff mount. I think that's cool. Uh, but I think he is the most likely, and he'll just be a great melee combatant, which the Empire does have a lack of in the hero department, so at least it'll fill that niche, but it's not who I'm hoping for. 
Uh, I'm hoping for Kurt Helborg. And I think he is the second most likely. I, I didn't even know the guy you just said existed, but after you described him, I'm like, that sounds like a surefire thing. But I think second would be Kurt Helborg. Uh, and then I really want yeah. Matthias Thulman, Witch Hunter. He had a standalone series of books. It was a it was a trilogy. So it's not like a long shot from the lore perspective, but I don't know how they'd make him special. It would just be a witch hunter. Because even in the story, he's not meant to be a particularly amazing witch hunter. He just is one. So it's a long oh, shot, I, but... I've never heard of him, but it sounds cool. I I was also thinking, I just remembered Luther Huss. That's another character they could add, but I don't think it would be this one. What about Azhag the Slaughterer? What, what about Azhag the Slaughterer? What if we put him on Empire? <laughs> If we put Azag the Slaughterer on Empire, he would be fantastic. <laughs> I don't think you'd ever bring him on as a wyvern, but he would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's geared up for this this fucking DLC, and they're like, "We're gonna get a Deathcaster on a dragon!" Hell yeah! And CA is like, "Yes, you are, but not the one you're thinking of." <laughs> It's fucking ass, <laughs> and they take him off the green skins. Hopefully, uh, they make sure that he is, does have the correct model for Skull Muncha, though. Yeah. Oh, wyverns. Though maybe wyverns would finally get a rework if uh, if Azhag was a part of the Empire DLC. They're like, wow, these, these wyverns like... suck. <laughs> we need to do something about this. Alright. Uh, you had a good jumping off point with that guy who I didn't even know his name. From Cyrus, since the DLC will probably be set in Wissenland, which is where Nuln is, uh, and that is the artillery electric count state, what needs to change for the Empire to have artillery that be worth taking except for the two ROR's? So all of the base artillery is what he's I talking about. I mean, if it just functioned correctly, like, that's honestly... Cannons don't burn well anymore, and they, they are weirdly inaccurate, and that's the biggest problem with them. If they worked better, they would be takeable. I don't know if that's a super satisfying answer, but they're... They're priced fair. Their stats on paper are good. They just don't function correctly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. I I feel the same way. Like looking at mortars, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. But then in game, I'm like, these suck. And then people people tell me mortars are good, but they always caveat it with. But you gotta take three of them and all aim at the same target. Or you got a gold chevron on them. I'm like, well, then the mortar isn't good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dread Saurians are amazing if you take three. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I sometimes bring a mortar in the back, but it's just, it's to sit there and to be at least a little annoying and then maybe get something to overextend to try to kill it. Or it's just to fulfill the attacking rule because I don't want to attack. Yeah. It's, like, it doesn't do a lot, but maybe it can force your opponent to be more aggressive than they should be. It's just, it, it misses. The same with the Great Cannon, it just misses a lot. If a unit runs to the side, it takes forever for it to turn the guns. Yeah. Which is why the ROR's like well the Sunmaker ROR is just because it explodes with huge devastating effect and is actually kills the units that it's firing at and it fires off its ammunition really quickly so you can get its value up before it gets compromised. And the great cannon works because it's got 9 chevrons and it's pretty accurate. This is more of a Thrones of Decay question in general than just the Empire part of it. But Olaf the Moose asks, 
Are there any special ROR units or abilities that you are hoping for in Thrones of Decay? And his example is like the anti-healing passive on the Mordheim Beowulfs. Like, is there any stuff that you're like, this would benefit Total War Warhammer as a whole, and I hope they add it? That's hard. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know if we need more like dark blood in the game. That's an ability that's just hard to know if your unit has been affected if one model is out on the side and then it makes you feel really bad if you cast regrowth mm -hmm. but uh the unit that has an ability that is like for me the coolest that it's kind of already in the game it's on the extended roster the stair river patrol has suppressed which just the unit that they're shooting at is slowed I know that that's on Rattling Gunners, I think? It is. Yeah, so that's uh, something that I think that the Empire would like. It's just a low people down that you're shooting at. Uh, as for abilities that they could get that are new to the game, I I don't really know if they need a ROR that does something. I mean, there's things that would be nice, like if they had something that blinded people, if dazed, but that's not really uh, game changing, and it's not really something that the Empire is desperately looking for. Mm -hmm. Something that I think could be fun would be lowering the heal cap of a unit where you wouldn't want it on like crosswomen where anything they touch just immediately gets heal capped but like put it on something significant like if you had elspeth von draken gets added and let's say she has like some ability called dark corruption that she can use it's it's a bound thing and maybe she has two uses on a cooldown or something but uh, when you hit something with it it's heal cap just becomes what its current health is so you eliminate all future healing that could happen to this unit. I think that could be pretty good. Because it's not like... Yeah. It's not the immediate damage, right? You're not just killing a unit mm -hmm. outright. If you use it on something that's full health, that thing's still going to be full health, but then your opponent has to re-tinker what they're going to spend their winds of magic healing and stuff. It could be interesting. I could also see that be being like, really overpowered. Would it be like a permanent thing that sticks on them? Like, even if they get away from her? Hmm. Oh, you're thinking... Well, that would have to be an aura, but that could be interesting. Because, like, it happens in campaign all the time where you start a game, and if your multi-entity models are wounded at all, they start out heal-capped, and that, that is really tough. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, what if someone just had that power? <laughs> uh, now that I'm, I'm, like, looking at some of the units, so you were talking about the Knights of Moor, if they introduced them as more of, like, their foot variant. If they wanted to do that as, like, a ROR version of the Great Swords, and they make it so that they're, like, an anti-undead sort of unit models can't be resurrected while the Knights of Moor are in contact with you. Something like that. Yeah. Which would work on the, I guess, for Revocation Crystal as well, but <laughs> that would be neat. The Knights of War suck. <laughs> I just took a look at them. Uh, they, they don't cause have... terror. They don't have magic damage, but they sure they cause terror, and they have immune to psychology and an aura that only works if they're in melee. Cool, bro. How many people do you have fighting around them that need ITP? If they're all, they already cause terror. They don't even need it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell knights of more <laughs> yeah they're also flanked by like the knights of everlasting light which are just insane and oh, yeah. the stubborn bulls which are also great oh the knights of everlasting light are amazing silver shield instead of bronze magic damage and a minus eight melee attack aura just constantly that's awesome Stubborn Bulls are also awesome. Yeah. Damn, Knights of Moor. No one will miss you. And they cost 100 more. 
and they cost a hundred more. <laughs> but, <laughs> you're not wrong, but you are kicking them while they're down. I already listed enough reasons that they're not good. <laughs> all right, all right. Moving on. We got to move on. We can't keep having interesting conversation. We have bad conversations to get to. From Cyrus, would you like heavy war wagons? For anyone who doesn't know, he's referring to the heavy war sleds of Kislev. No. <laughs> Come on! I mean, no, that sounds horrible. Doesn't everybody already complain about war wagons? Nah, get some heavy war yeah. wagons. Why, like, what, you just want to give them more armor and make them better at melee? Like, does that sound fun? Uh, that's a good question. I like that. I mean, and also we have the steam tank, which is, like, I mean, it's the sad older brother of the war wagon, but, like, if this is basically what I would want a heavy war wagon to be, just better. Give us light war wagons that are faster. Ah, they need to be faster. All right. Coops and Nurgle's PA, on that note, is there anything you really don't want the Empire to get in Thrones of Decay? Something that would be toxic. Is there... Uh, well, I talked about the Gisales, and I don't want the land ship. That sounds terrible. Um, other than that, no, I don't think that there's anything that I'm super... Like, please don't give them this. It's just that the land ship is, like, there's it's either going to be terrible or it's going to be toxic if it is introduced into the game because how could it not and the empire just does not need Giselles. no other faction needs to get Giselle. stop pushing Giselles on factions my my answer to that is actually very likely and i'm ashamed you haven't thought of it 550 grenader foot uh foot guys the you think they're gonna get grenadiers yeah that would be that would be very bad they no <laughs> that would bad. be very bad they're gonna get it <laughs> i mean did you see the 500 gold unbreakable halberds of kislev these guys are getting 500 gold grenaders dude yeah i the empire really does not need grenadiers i that would be like very bad. That would be very bad. I mean, bad. no, it would actually be very good for the Empire. It would just be bad for the balance. Oh, yeah. Because if the Empire is able to clear out infantry effectively, their front line, the Empire front line, is good. Like, a lot of people think that it's bad, but for 350 gold, Spearmen with Shields are probably the most cost efficient front line unit in the game. And Swordsmen at 375 are also fantastic. Uh, if they had, like, even if it was just, like, blasting charges from miners, the Empire front, like, you can blasting charge a unit, and the Empire front line units can easily clean it up. It would be very, very hard to get into Empire backlines, and getting into Empire backlines is, like, essential for winning the game. So, yes, you are correct. If they did get 500 gold grenadiers, that would be extremely toxic. That would be very bad. <laughs> Alright. Is, from Stead, is there an, a unit that already exists on another roster? Let's just pretend that CA would copy and paste it and just slap a new coat of paint on it. Is there any unit you would like to see an Empire or Kisla version of? For example, like, Bombers of the Vampire Coast, he said, which I didn't read that before we just had the Grenader conversation, but uh, <laughs> any, anything reskinned that you would want on Kislev or the Empire. Let's, let's maybe lean towards Kislev, because this has been all Empire mm -hmm. so far. So, for Kislev, this is, since they just got the uh, lancers are now dealing like insane lancing. 
before I, I did want them to have like uh something like the wood elves with very light cavalry that's very punchy but like will die quickly if it gets caught into melee now that lancers are the uh, winged lancers and griffin legion are kind of insane i don't think that they need that anymore mm -hmm. uh any unit that they could want i have one if you I, need to think yeah if if you have one you can go i would need to think about it for a hot sec uh i would go with Oxina assassins or call them something like that and reskin death runners or nasty skulkers and just like take the Oxina unit model and give it dual knives with some armor piercing but still stocked and like runs up on fools I think that'd be pretty good. Or you could reskin Chameleon Stalkers and, like, make that the Akshina Assassin. But I think, like, a variant of the Akshina Ambusher would be cool. Yeah, and then... Um... A more melee-focused version of the Akshina. That could be... That could be an interesting unit. Yeah. I don't think it'd be particularly meta, but I think it'd be fun, especially in campaign, having, like... You know, a full vanguard force where you have the main force that you can draw the AI to the gates, and then you have this vanguard archer slash assassin core because you take a couple of each unit, and then they can infiltrate the back and do that stuff. That's some of the most fun I have with Skaven in campaign. Yeah, I think that giving uh, Kislev a like a fat, a very fast, sneaky hits hard unit uh, could be nice. The, or give them even, uh, if you're not going for a Death Runner equivalent, you could go for like a, even like a Vanguard deployed Witch Elf. Just something that's low armored, very fast and killy. Mm -hmm. Like dismounted dervishes. Yeah, and of course when we're talking about these things, you can alter the price, right? It's not like... Well, it has by our blood and all that stuff, but still make it 850 gold, like the Skaven one. It's like, no, yeah, I mean, you price it appropriately. It could be fun. So, What about ice yeah. bear sled riders with gun axes? <laughs> they have those. <laughs> those exist. <laughs> all right. They're a fair and balanced unit. From Michael M. again, it, what if any unit for the Empire roster with the upcoming DLC, are you most excited... Or hopeful gets reworked not added a current unit that exists getting changed so this is a thing that i've been uh like i don't think it's gonna happen but i am hope i would want to happen is like a rework to actually empire knights but not changing what they do now but changing how they work with uh, if they're going to add a bunch of knightly orders, are they going to keep adding knightly orders just as their own individual units? Or do they make it so that it's an, a, like a mark that you give them, similar to the Warriors of Chaos? And in Tabletop, they also have the Inner Circle uh, mark that you can give to knights to, make, to increase their stats a bit. So... Uh, I like my idea would be for making it so that you can pay to give them the inner circle upgrade or otherwise you can make it so that there's empire knights and then knights of the inner circle and then you can mark those into being the knightly orders <laughs> you make me so mad <laughs> so I recorded a video today that was what I hope each faction gets for the Thrones of Decay. And uh, I won't spoil the Dwarves and Nurgle. You'll have to wait for the video for that. But I literally said, I hope that we get, like the Bretonian rework came out with the Grail Mark or whatever. You can pay 200 gold and get yeah. the Grail Mark. And then I mentioned the Chaos Dwarves also have that Demon Forged clicker. Yeah. So they seem Out to be forged, adding these yeah. clickers. And I was like, man, it'd be so cool if you could take Empire Knights and like, if you pull them up, you'd get a clicker and like you could turn one of them into, you know, the Knights of more like some of the campaign exclusive ones. You could just pay more and use it on a clicker. 
Um, but to be fair to myself, I also did have the idea of like halberdiers. You could also click them, and if you pay more, you could get the Northland Mariners. Like, so t giving the Empire roster some other more Electric Count flavor units, of course, priced appropriately before anybody's like. The Kerber Greatswords? Fucking unbreakable greatswords <laughs> for like 700 gold? Yeah, I mean, you could probably put that upgrade at like 350 gold to turn it on. But like, my point is, is you could make the campaign exclusive units part of the actual roster with the yes. clickers. I do really like the Empire campaign exclusives. A lot of them, at least. Uh, if you're like, what is the unit that you want most on the Empire roster? The Noble Sons Abroad. They're right there. I, this unit is amazing. I wish it was in the game. But uh, if I, you could do that with any of your campaign exclusives, that would be cool. You'd probably have to change how some of them work. Some of them are a lot better than others. Yeah. But yeah, that's the rework that I would want. Like, I would love to have the campaign exclusives in. I don't know if that's something that they would do. But uh something that like for the rework question i would say like empire knights specifically like the knightly orders and uh the inner circle upgrade being things that you can add to them i like that the uh eldred guard spearman electric count special unit that's too op to even have in the game is just peasant long spears <laughs> <laughs> Solid really is. I, they're 70 armor, though. Alright, Jade Warrior Halberds, then. <laughs> oh, boy. Look at those stats. Those are some 600 gold stats, boys. Yeah, they're... They actually have exactly the same stats of Empire Spearmen. They just gain 40 armor, a silver shield, and... Uh, expert charge defense and you're paying 250 gold for that yeah it's like it's... wow no way <laughs> yeah that that one's definitely been power crept where it's like that that could be pulled out of the extended roster and probably still wouldn't even see play yeah for sure i mean even the caribou great swords as much as people say that they're really op because they're unbreakable and they have bathed in blood which is true they also cost 1100 gold they're like quite expensive they probably wouldn't see that much play yeah i could see like one to hold your your vanguard position like just the center of your line is never gonna break mm -hmm. i could see that all right back yeah, to the questions sure. back to the questions uh lamb sauce king asks what would be the most important empire unit to be added to improve their roster we talked about that ad nauseum but i think like as you mentioned, the Empire Gisales, if they get those, the Hawkland rifles, sounds like they would be the actual, like, if, you, if you're not talking about game balance, if you're talking about just raw power creep, then that seems pretty fucking strong. That or those grenades that you're talking about. Or the grenades. Um, if you're like, what is one unit that you could throw onto the Empire roster to make it the most overpowered it could be? It's like, I mean, Illyrian Reavers, probably. Yeah. That like any uh fast melee light cav that's cheap that would just make the empire roster completely insane not because you necessarily use it to uh dive enemy backlines but because you can use those to just stop enemies from getting into your backlines for cheaper than an empire knight mm -hmm. not that they should not get that this is not what i'm saying i'm saying that that would be the fastest way to make the empire roster overpowered <clears throat> more overpowered but sure um yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry empire s tier faction i made mean, they're strong but they're not s tier i'll give you that <laughs> all right all right um ba -ba -bum. so groot had an interesting question if you could... All these other questions have been shit, but Sergrit asked the first interesting one. Was how that sounded. Anyway. If you could add a fast light cav, or an AP cav, or a flying cav for the Empire, which would you pick? You can only pick one. 
Oh, well, I, I kind of just said the answer to that. But the you, light cat. This, this, this was preference, not necessarily strongest. Oh, preference? Preference. Um, it's probably the same. Light cav? That's mostly because it would both be... It would, yes, be the fastest way to make the Empire roster overpowered. But also it just thematically works the best. Like, we already have AP cav in the Demigriff Knight. And flying cab just turns you into Britannia. So light cab is both like keeps the empire grounded, both like literally and metaphorically, but and I personally just enjoy using light cavalry more than uh either flying or uh mid-tier AP Cavalry. If I want AP Cavalry, I'm going Demigriff Knights. Follow-up questions. Do you think that they would... Uh, because CA is so good at picking different names for everything and not making it awful for my life as a caster, do you think that they would call these uh, new Light Cavalry Rangers or Glade Riders with Spears? I think that they would call them Mounted Yeomen. <laughs> Mounted but, Rangers! But it would be okay, because nobody actually brings Mounted Yeomen, so it wouldn't get you confused. I'd still be mad. <laughs> I got mad about the Frostworm thing, and people are like, it's correct now. That Okay, because it's correct now doesn't mean I'm allowed to... I'm not allowed to be mad that these names are getting thrown around. God forbid we think of a new name for something. Yeah, they just changed the name. Oh, what is it called now? The Chaos Frost Dragon? Ah, yeah. Chaos Frost Dragon. Which is fine, that's what it was, but then it should have been that from the start. I don't know. Dwarves have rangers. Frickin' High Elves have rangers. It's fine. I think they would be called Pistoliers with swords. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Sword ears. Alright, Sir Groot asks a question that I know the answer to and I feel is rather obvious but i'll ask it because he forces me to hey do you think generic caster lords for the empire would be good um yes yeah i i'm definitely this is another one of my like i feel controversial takes i hope that the empire doesn't get generic caster lords just because it would be really hard to justify not bringing a generic caster lord every game uh unless they're like really squishy or they don't generate winds of magic very well mm -hmm. because the empire generally wins the game based on its army not its lord you can use your lord as like a terror bomb a lot of times uh boris is particularly good at that but you can always bring an army that is a huntsman general stripped down from everything and then try to win the game off your army because the empire just uses uh the combined arms and that's how you win the game mm -hmm. so adding generic caster lords would just make it, especially if they have something small and fast like a pegasus mount that just makes it so that you pretty much the correct way to play the faction is just bring a cheap generic caster lord stick him on a pegasus and keep him safe and flying around while you win the game with your army which is just not the most interesting way of winning games and mm -hmm. having like fun legendary lords is uh, really neat and the empire has a lot of unique ones that are currently all very viable and i'd like to to stay that way pigman 202 the best and the epic dwarf asking the same question the epic dwarf in chat right now where's my metal mage hero for the empire i'll answer this one balthazar gelt is the only metal mage he's the only one you can't have another one he's special he's a special boy all right and why would you want another one it's Balthasar Gelt. <laughs> Balthasar fucking Gelt. Who else is going to welcome you to Estalia? Fucking nobody. All Look right. at that face. Listen to that voice. 
Actually, the point is you can't look at that face. <laughs> look at that mask. <laughs> all right, all right. Do you think, uh, this is from Michael. Do you think Empire and Kislev and Kislev, ooh, they're included. Empire and Kislev would benefit substantially if CA were to reintroduce old Total War features like characters being, being able to dismount at will. Uh, n no. So, dismounting specifically has always been like a very uh, niche mechanic in, uh, it was in Napoleon. I believe Empires and uh, Shogun. In Napoleon and Empires, there were buildings that you could get into. So having a unit like a Dragoon could dismount and storm a building, which is not usually necessary, but it could be useful. They could also uh, go into a building and hold it if you were afraid that they were just going to get shot on their horses. So that was, like, a very niche but useful situation. And in Shogun, uh, cavalry could get caught in combat animations and killed very quickly by spearmen, even of, like, vastly lower quality. So, like, Yari Achigaru could just murder Katana cavalry. Yeah. So in, like, very specific circumstances, you dismount your Katana sam or cavalry so that they could fight the spearmen on foot. In Warhammer, your cavalry is not going to get completely massacred by uh, spearmen, usually. And the games are also much quicker. So just cycling out of fights is easier. And taking the time to dismount would just not be worth it, like, in any circumstance ever. Now, light infantry formation, so where your army spreads out, that could be useful because spreading the infant, like spreading out ranged units would make it so that they're less likely to get burning headed or hit with uh, mortar or indirect explosive fire. Mm -hmm. But that's super niche and it's like, it's fine. It would definitely be a buff but it's not something that I think that they would add. And it's not something that would help to any, like, really noticeable degree. It would just be kind of neat. All right. All right. Last question of the new stuff category. Anti-Kaiju and Nurgle's PA... Could the Empire play another way that is not Kite after they get some of the new stuff? Or will Empire players continue to just use Outriders and War Wagons? I already think they can play things besides Kite, yeah, but I'll ask I, the question. Yeah, I I don't really Kite that much. It's not really my play style. And uh, the Empire can Kite, but it can also do like Pike and Shot builds or Mass Cavalry builds. So... The short answer is, uh, they don't do that already. But the longer answer is, they're probably still going to be able to kite. It's something because the Empire is just a faction that specifically and intentionally can be played in many different ways. So they probably still will be able to kite, but they might have other tools that make it that they're stronger when they're not kiting. Which mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes them more or less toxic yet. Alright. <laughs> we'll have to see on those grenades. This has been a lot of serious questions. You can talk about a lot of serious stuff. We need to stop doing that. We're going to do some really quick, dumb questions. Alright. we got to get through these at one point or another. From Coops, how does it feel to be confused for anticity constantly? The I, I don't feel that way. Like, I don't think I sound like him, but I've been told many times that I do, in fact. So I guess my opinion is not valid on that matter. All right. 
you feel great about it and you agree. I, I hear that, buddy. I hear that. From Segos, if Empire is S tier, what makes Skaven so OP and Sir Groot smelly? Uh, I can't answer about Sir Groot. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Empire and S tier, but Skaven are just, they're mean and they shoot all my stuff, and their globes seem to only work when they're specifically targeting my knights, and I don't like it. Alright. Alright. Is Raced or Segos the better Kislev main from Sir Groot as well? I think that they would have to do a best of seven of just Kislev mirror matches to decide that. Okay. I think that sounds like a fun stream idea. All right. Speaking of that, Central Scrutinizer challenges you to a best of seven duel to decide who is the one true emperor of man. Do you accept? Yeah, I can do that. Or is it only Empire Mirror matches? Or like, can we spice it up a little bit? I think it's just Empire. Well, then, I mean, I'm down for that. But I think that we have to do one build, and then play against each other seven times. Alright, we pounded through a couple silly questions back onto the real ones before too many people lose interest. Uh, let's see. There was one that you just touched on that actually could segue well, but let me find it. Eh, can't find it, but this is a good one. From Lasaurus. Who does Faith, Steel, and Gunpowder better? So I would do, like, each one. Like, who does Steel better, who does Faith better, and who does Gunpowder better? Uh, well, Steel, unfortunately, is Kislev. Because they just wear a lot more armor. The Empire, they just only pay their knights, their state troops. Even though they all have breastplates, only have 30 armor. They don't even give armor to their backline troops. So there is definitely a decided steel advantage on the for Kislev. But Faith, I mean Sigmar, come on. So you think there's no one in this game that has higher religious fanaticism than the Sigmarites? Uh well, I mean flagellants? That's, that's, does any other faction have anything that compares to a flagellant or a flagellant? That's actually, that is a good point. No one has enough faith in whatever dark god to actually be unbreakable for the cause. <laughs> exactly. Like, we can say that Kislev is, uh, they've all got the by our blood, but is that really because of their, their faith or is that just because they're like, a little bit insane it's a genetic condition it's in the name <laughs> it's a disease man yeah, it's in the blood uh, they just they just don't what they want to like i don't know just keep going beyond their limits that's just their problem that has nothing to do with urson all right all right gunpowder and um so they both have a good amount of gunpowder, but I think that the Empire wins because they have dudes on horseback with guns. What about Shorfs? Yeah. Well, they're not part of this discussion. Shorfs <laughs> are mean and... <laughs> they're, they're just... They're bad guys. They're bad people. <laughs> They also do not give... They don't have guys on horseback with guns, so... They have they a cannon don't... that can shatter the earth, but you're like, nah, it's not a I don't on even horse. know if that is gunpowder that they're using in these, like, magma cannons and uh, deathquake mortars. Is that gunpowder? I have no idea. I think it's some demon shit. <laughs> you're getting me on the technicality here. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, 
You mentioned them. Cyrus asks, when are flagellants actually worth it? Oh, so this is... Flagellants have become kind of obsolete for a couple of reasons in Game 3. The first is just the switch to ultra unit size makes it so that all units across the line hold a little bit longer than they used to, which already like cuts into the flagellant's uh, realm of being the unit that sticks around. And the other, the thing that really like nail in the coffin for the flagellants is the slight price reduction that Empire State Troops got. So. Spearmen from three, uh, 25 to 300. Uh, spearmen with shields from 375 to 350. And swordsmen from 400 to 375. So, spearmen without shields at 300. You can get two of them for the price of one flagellant. Two spearmen is always better than one flagellant. It can cover more ground and the two of them together will hold longer than one flagellant with its pathetic 12 melee defense. Hmm. It, the flagellant will gain melee defense from its ability, but when it's losing in combat, but that's just, that just makes it so that it loses slightly slower. Whereas the Spearman with Shield, like, if one of them gets deleted by arrow fire, at least you've only lost 300 gold. If the flagellant gets deleted by arrow fire, you've lost 600 gold. So, and the spearman, you still have a second spearman. Mm -hmm. It's the same fate that Sigmar's sons suffered because spearman with shields now, you can get two of them for the price of one Sigmar son. And two spearmen with shield. Are, this is one of the best frontline units in the game, as I said earlier. It's, there's just, not a huge point in bringing Sigmar's sons, even though they are a fantastic unit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, if they cost 25 less gold, you would probably see them brought. Because then it wouldn't just be two spearmen with shields, it'd be some, uh, like, a spearman and a swordsman. But as it is now, they're just, they're very expensive, and they're too squishy for how expensive they are. I see. All right. Well, someday they'll be good again, I guess. I miss them. Yeah, if they had any more melee defense, they might be fine. If the strength of the pennant was like an actual buff as opposed to required for them to not completely suck. Sigmar asks, what are the Empire and Kislev's best and worst matchups? So I'd say one for each. Like, what's the Empire's best and uh, worst, and what's Kislev's best and worst? The Empire's best matchup, in my opinion, is the Wood Elves. Because the Wood Elves just struggle a lot with massive amounts of knights. The Empire can just put four Empire knights and two to three knights of the blazing sun on the field and then the wood elves just kind of suffer if you kill all their uh archers and your knights trade up into their the wood elf cavalry it just is a hard matchup for them mm -hmm. uh their worst matchup is probably don't do it these days either the Lizard men or green skins. Yeah, Skaven's not on the list. Yeah, Skaven's not on the list anymore. I know you hate Skaven, but I was gonna call you a slanderous person and... if you said Skaven was their worst matchup. No, no, it's Skaven is not a good matchup, but it is not entirely terrible. It's not entirely terrible. The green skins and lizard men. It's just. They can throw a lot at you, uh, both cavalry coming in, cheap infantry that can slip into your lines. They can both challenge your cavalry and press your... So you struggle, your Empire Knights can get killed very quickly. 
And once you lose the Empire Knights, they can start slipping in through the cracks to get onto your backline units, which are absolutely essential for you to win these matchups. Mm -hmm. So you need to get, like, you kind of need to focus fire on the high priority units, whether that's the Dread Sarian or whether that's uh, the Kislev Boar Boys. Or, I'm sorry, not Kislev, the Greenskin Boar Boys before they can, like, before they compromise your backline, because them compromising your backline is almost inevitable. You just need to deal as much damage as you can before and hope that your wards can carry the day. I like, so, your, I like your Freudian slip that Kislev's new lord is also as heck. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, though. Kislev is a terrible matchup for the Empire for the same reason, but that's actually because of the new buffs. Yeah. But going to Kislev, so for there, Kislev is probably the strongest faction in the game right now. Their worst matchup is more like factions that are potentially capable of beating Kislev, which is, again, probably uh, Lizards and... <laughs> I mean, Lizards and Greenskins might be the same thing. They... They have a lot of the same uh, general weaknesses as the Empire, where if you can challenge their cavalry, it limits their play. Kislev is just, their roster is a lot stronger. Like, their units in general are a lot stronger than the Empire right now. Mm -hmm. So, they don't struggle as much. But both the Greenskins and the Lizardmen can still... Uh, put up a decent fight by uh, picking off individual cavalry units, winning big cavalry engagements, and then using that to snowball into the backline of Kislev. Mm -hmm. If they have a backline. Sometimes it's just armored Kossars, which won't win the fight by themselves if you can take out all the high-priority targets. The best matchup for Kislev is... Man, I don't want to... I feel bad, but it's going to be Wood Elves again. They're, it's just the Empire, but it's even worse, because Winged Lancers are even better. Kislev versus Wood Elves is... just almost unwinnable for the Wood Elves. I think it's one of the worst matchups in the entire game. I agree with that. It's very unpog. Sigmar also asks, how do you deal with the Kislev's unbreakable cavalry when you're trying to defend your own missiles? So let's say you're playing Empire it's, versus Kislev. How do you stop dervishes? Um, you try to hit them before they get, or pop their by our blood passive before they get into your box. And just generally deal so much damage to them that they lose a ton of models and aren't capable of dealing a lot of damage in return. It's a little annoying. You really want to get your mass in front of them. So, like, if you have, uh, in that example, like, I would try to hit them squarely with the Empire Knights and uh, pop there by our Blood Passive. And then if, like, a couple models slip into the gun line, it doesn't super matter. They're not going to kill that many gunmen. And they'll route instantly as the by our Blood Passive ends. But it, it is pretty annoying. And uh, you just kind of have to accept that your guys are going to be compromised for some amount of time. Just try to minimize the amount of dervishes that get into the back line and the amount of damage that they're capable of doing when they're there. From Lasaurus, what matchups would you upgrade from Winged Lancers to Griffin Legion? Um, so upgrading is, that's just, if I have money left over, like 300 gold left over that I'm not going to spend anywhere else, I can upgrade to a Griffin Legion. Uh, or if I want more than four winged lancers. It's not something that, uh, I am going to go, oh, I need a stronger cavalry unit than the just the winged lancers it's more that if i have 
extra money to spend, then it is a massive improvement to the Winged Lancer, so I might just throw that money behind uh, the Griffin Legion if it's an important cavalry matchup. So an example would be versus uh, like the High Elves. Uh, I might want uh, better uh, cavalry that's more armored to survive the arrow fire or that the low AP spearmen. I'm not going to intentionally bring Griffin Legion before bringing uh, Winged Lancers just because the Winged Lancers is a nice price off. But I would, if I have 300, 600 gold left over and I'm out of like the Kislevite Warriors, 600 isn't enough for an armored Kossar, I'll just change two Winged Lancers into two Griffin Legion. We have a bunch of questions about lords. Papa Palpatine asks, can I use Boris in a competitive build? I assume he means Boris Ursus, because Boris Toddbringer is taken quite a lot. Yes, Boris Toddbringer is amazing. Boris Ursus, he is okay. He actually got kind of nerfed in with the rampage changes, unfortunately, because he rampages himself with the Fury of Urson. Oh, yeah. Which is unfortunate, but it does give him terror, which is something that a lot of times players don't realize that you can trigger a terror bomb in the middle of their forces. But his big, uh, the only matchup I think that he is like actually viable in is versus the ogres, because there's just a lot of large targets for him to fight. He does require a Patriarch and a Caster, which makes him very expensive. Mm -hmm. But he is he is a good combatant. I think competitively against the Ogres is his only real matchup, but you could bring him in a versus like Greenskins or another low leadership faction. Yeah, he is. He is pricey considering everything you have to take to help him out. Oh, right. This one is inclusive. Uh, Gotrek, where were you? Since we're on Lords. Damn it, I lost the question. There we go. Gotrek Starbreaker. What is the best use case for each lord, including the non-legendary ones? He doesn't say Kislev or Empire, so I'd say both, but also, like, Rapid Fire, not... Like... Okay, Rapid Fire. Starting so... with the Empire. Sure. General of the Empire, don't bring him. Huntsman General, strip him down entirely and bring him just to be the cheapest lord that you can bring. Marcus Wolfhard, same thing as the Huntsman General, but you want a better, cooler lord that has a snare, a snare, but you pay a little bit more for him. Balthazar Gelt is if you want the cheapest possible lord that you can bring, and uh, Metal Magic is good in the matchup, because he, you strip him down, you don't need a caster with him, so he is like 1,300 to 1,100 gold as the cheapest lord. Arch Lector, don't bring him. Volkmar is if you want a very cheap, fast uh, guy who can get into the backline and be disruptive and somewhat survivable. Um, I wouldn't bring him on his uh, war altar anymore just because it's slow and an easy target. Just bring him on horse and throw him into a backline of like Wood Elves or uh, against the Vampire Coast. Uh, Boris Togbringer, any time that you want a caster that is not a life caster, uh, he's amazing, and if you want to terror bomb people, he is also amazing with his Crush the Weak as a leadership bomb, so, and he heals himself. Uh, Carl Franz, anytime you want to win a cavalry engagement or a pocket fight, or you just want to duel single entities, uh, Carl Franz is amazing. You do need to bring a life caster with him, and so he does get quite expensive, but he's also great. For Kislev, Boyar, just don't bring him. 
Druzina. Every time we want to bring the Boyar, bring the Druzina and strip him down of everything. He's just a Huntsman General that you pay a little bit more for having decent com uh, melee combat stats. Ice Witch is if you want a really cheap caster lord, just strip her down and bring whatever spells you want. You do only get Ice and Tempest, which aren't amazing lores, but they have okay spells on each of them. Kastalton is the exact same as Volkmar, just strip him down to only his healing and throw him into the back lines of uh, factions that you want to compromise the back line of. He's hard to kill, so just fire and forget. Boris, I just talked about him, like, he's only really good versus ogres. Otherwise, he's super meh. Zarina, if you want a better ice witch with slightly more uh, horde clearing with her frost fang ability, and she's just slightly better at combat. She has the crystal cloak if you're spamming the cheap Kislev or lore of ice spells, and she's just a decent lord. And uh, Mother Ostankia is probably the best lord on the roster. She still has her Gulias and Spirit Bear for healing and just like infinite for whatever reason bombardments and she also has her cauldron so she has artillery shots you just can't dive with her into quite as suicidal situations as you could before since she lost 2000 hp but she is still extraordinarily strong and the new lore literally has a banned spell on it but otherwise it's Fine, it's not great, but it's fine. Yeah, if you're in quick battle, there's no reason not to take Vengeance of Spirits. It's yeah, crazy. it's it's disgusting. Uh, da, 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 you mentioned it. There you are. Chalk Crow says, "Is the lore of Ice slash Tempest any good, considering that lore of Hags is currently in the game?" Um, without that spell. Yes, Lore of Ice is probably... Lore of Ice and Tempest are probably both better than the Lore of Hags without the Broken spell. Um, Lore of Tempest has Hailstorm, which is just a kind of bad Searing Doom. It's slightly uh, bigger radius, but which makes it worse. But it, it, in essence, it's just Searing Doom. Blizzard is actually a really good... Uh, kill spell it unfortunately the ice witches don't really have a great way of generating wings of magic so or the ice witches do the ice maid or the frost maidens don't uh but blizzard is actually a good uh killing spell it's basically just an overpriced pit of shades um ice maidens kissed for lore of ice uh, is decent at clearing out uh, low armor chaff units. It basically works like old Windblast used to. Frostblades is an okay melee buff for a unit, and Deathfrost is an actually decent Spirit Leech effect. So they don't have many good lore or spells on each lore, but the spells that they have make them uh, viable in most matchups. Hmm. All right. Rusty asks, if Carl Franz had a regen item, would you take him more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Uh, Carl Franz, like, only weakness is that he requires a life caster. If he didn't require that, then I would bring him at, like, every game. Like, why wouldn't you? He's quite good. Uh, Michaelum asks, should Empire and Kislev share more lores of magic? Um, I mean, Empire shouldn't get, like, lore of ice or anything, but should Kislev get access to new lores? I mean, they kind of already have. Uh, they have Beast Death Shadows as like lores that are shared between them they probably don't need any more i mean they would love to have healing but they don't need that they don't need lore of life 
Um, so, n no, I don't think that the if you're asking, uh, should Kislev get access to like some of like mercenary mages from the Empire? Then no, I don't think that that they should. I think that keeping them with their own lore of magic, or you pay for a hag mother that has, or a hag witch that has, uh, the lore of beast death or shadows is enough to keep them distinct. Uh, this question's in chat, but Olaf the Moose just asked, should you ever bring Ulrika for Shadows Magic? And I literally forgot she existed till now. Um, I used to versus, uh, Britannia, back when Britannia was super broken with their knights. Um, she's very, you can strip her down of most of her stuff and get her to... I have 1650 as her price right now. You can get her to 1500 if you remove the hunger. But uh, Dancing Blades is a legitimately fantastic ability. Uh, buffing herself and debuffing enemies by 24 melee attack. That's just a fantastic ability that allows her to help win cavalry engagements that she's involved in. And then War of Shadows is fine. She has a bow, which is nice. I mean, it doesn't have any... It doesn't have great armor piercing. But you can just use her to pick off enemy cavalry models. And she's expensive. She's not amazing, but she's not completely untakeable. Gotcha. Alrighty. Speaking of lords and magic and all that stuff, Tequila Sunset asks, what would you change about Balthazar Gelt to make him more interesting? I, I don't understand the question. Balthazar Gelt is... He's Balthazar Gelt. What could you change about him? He is the only metal caster on the entire empire roster he is the cheapest lord option that you can bring and he is a remarkably mid melee combatant and he comes with a nice spell resist and decent missile resist so he's just he is a extremely reliable cheap and effective lord that fits really well onto the empire roster and currently he is their only mage on their roster but elspeth probably will join him there Boo. Boo. but as if she's the expensive caster and he's the cheap caster then it, they should be able to like have enough separation between the two Oh, crazy. Let's do one more serious question, then dip into silly for just a second. Uh, top balance issue for Kislev slash the Empire from Bowman. You can interpret this however you like. What's All right, so top balance issue for the Empire. Uh, it's probably War Wagons. This is like the elephant of the room of why is the... Why do people hate the empire oh it's war wagons and they have gotten slightly nerfed by just being able to be hit better but the easiest nerf for them is just remove some of their speed just make them a little bit slower make it so that cavalry has an easier time catching it up to them if they're completely unsupported mm -hmm. kislev it's uh by our blood for sure but that's, like, the one thing that you can point to and be like, that's overpowered. But, like, it's not the only thing. Kislev just... If you remove by our blood, Kislev's still S-tier because everything is good on Kislev. Um, so... I mean, the biggest... The biggest problem that I have with Kislev right now is just Glorious Charge is ridiculous. Glorious Charge is ridiculous. 
just remove okay. the first point of glorious charge. Just completely remove it. No, 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 if... no, 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 no. I, I need to flame someone right now, but I can't. I will not say who it is. I will not out them like that. But someone was asking if Bretonia could get glorious charge, and I shut that down immediately. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. That would be that would be the like, Britannia's already uh S tier faction that has to be nerfed into only having one Grail unit. Like no. <laughs> they don't need Glorious Charge. That would just be ridiculous. Glorious charges if it just read that enemies take a leadership penalty as if they'd been attacked in the flank cool it does a little bit more leadership damage you can route units quickly if you hit them really hard that's neat that's it doesn't super affect the outcome of the game and it's a nice little buff that says hey winged lancers they have the wings that make them spooky that's cool the charge bonus duration being doubled is completely insane when their charge bonus is 70. It makes it so that they just will punch up into units that they have absolutely no right punching up into. And yeah. it makes them one of the most cost-efficient cavalry units in the game. And you don't need to be microing them super hard to get value out of them, but if you are microing super hard of them, uh, super hard with them, then they become, they go from an S tier unit to like an S plus plus tier unit. They just cycle charge back and forth between units. You have an infinite charge bonus going, and they're just completely insane. I have three quick questions for you because they're all kind of the same but different enough that I couldn't group them. Uh, Michael M asks, should low-tier Kislev units have buyer blood like the Kislevite warriors or the Kislevite dervishes? Okay. So, I would... This is uh, the hard question because I would say yes, but not the way buyer blood is now. Because I think that by our blood needs to be changed, but I like the idea of it. Where, if you're like, what? How does each faction win the game? Like, the whole Kislev conceit is that Kislev is a they are gritty. They will hold their ground and they will grind. They will fight beyond their limits to like grind out enemy armies. That's. I like that idea. I think it makes them unique compared to the Empire or Britannia or uh, Grand Cathay, so the other human order factions in the game. It does cement them as a different playstyle. The problem is right now, the way that By Our Blood works is like very uninteractive. It just makes it so that your units, every Kislev unit is going to be annoying. So, I would say don't remove it from their low tier units, but change how the entire thing works. And I do have ideas about that, but I think that there's a question about how that, so I don't know if I should save that. Yes. Save okay. That. That's why there were these three questions that it's like, they're all kind of close, but they're different enough. Uh, Tequila Sunset also saying that adjust the duration by unit tiers could be pretty good. Um... Let's go to Nurgle's PA's one next because it's a shorter conversation than the, the third. If Fire Blood was removed entirely, how balanced would the roster be? Would it need to would Kislev need buffs somewhere else to stay mid tier? And I think you kinda no. answered that before you yeah, said No. By our blood, if they literally removed by our blood, this faction would still be insane. Yeah. So just thought I'd throw that in there, PA. He answered it on a different question, but yours was noted. Then there is the question you were thinking of from myself and Butcherbird. Would you rework by our blood? If so, how? So I have two ways that I would rework it. The first way is does it would be to turn it into an active. So each unit gets an active by our blood passive that has to be that the player 
uses and it's a one-time use on each unit that would be if like you're a starcraft pro and you use it exactly before each of your units breaks it would work exactly how it does right now so the problem with it is that for the kislev player it might feel really bad if you miss the buy our blood passive on one of your units and it also wouldn't solve the I right click your cannon with my dervish and then press by our blood as they go in. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't fix those problems, but it does make it so that it is like the kiss of play. Like if you are watching these by our blood passives go off at the right time, you at least know that the kiss of pa player is playing very well. It's not that they're just firing, forgetting a unit. Mm -hmm. The other way that I would change by our blood is to make it a army-wide one-time use per battle like the uh, you use it like the wa so it's a army ability on the side you can use it from the start of the game but you can only use it once and it turns the entire kislev army unbreakable at once so and i would increase its duration a little bit if you did that to make it like 45 seconds mm -hmm. but that would be you can use it at the beginning of the game as you're coming in uh and your units are all getting engaged to make it so that your front line can hold a little bit longer or you can use it as a second wind in the late game but you can only use it once so it gives the kiss the player a little bit more uh like they have to think about using it more and that would solve the issue of you can't just throw a dervish into the back line because you're not going to want to waste your entire army passive on one dervish unless you time it correctly so that your entire army gets engaged then you want to send in everything at once so it allows like it makes it so that the army is more about like collapsing on them or if you're playing a defensive style it's about using it at the right time to get your guys to survive the first attack uh, attack of your enemy army so like if the beast men are attacking you from everywhere you use it to survive that first press and then you can try to take over the battle afterwards all right that would probably be my my ideal solution would be that it's a one time for the entire kislev army because i do again like the idea of it's like the kislev army is based on like they dig in their heels and they'll fight it out that makes them different than that makes them feel like a different faction than the empire which they're uh they're human brethren that they're often compared to but as of right now the by our blood passive is just not interactive it's not fun and it just makes an already broken faction feel even worse to play against we've been going for an hour and a half we are at our second intermission of silly questions if you want more serious analysis don't leave i'm just throwing in some silly ones all right Bowman and Pop Palpatine ask, favorite character from the lore of Kislev or the Empire? Is it Karl Franz? Yes. Lit. Yeah, God he's, Sorry, you go. He's cool. He is cool. Gotrick Starbreaker asks, what is the Riz of the Reich, and who has the most Riz in the entire Empire? In the entire Empire? Well, I mean, it's gotta be Balthazar Gelt. He's got the cape, he's got the golden mask, he's got the golden everything. He rides a pegasus. He do be risen pretty darn good. Stratgame asks, of the Borises, who has more riz, Ursus or Toddbringer? So, that has to be Boris Ursus. That dude's got the wings, he rides around with, he's got a bear that just follows him around. Does... He makes the scruffy beard look good. That's some good riz. Between, this is from Tremor, between the Empire and the heroes of Kislev, who has the superior headwear? 
Oh. It's got to be like Kislev. They've just got the, the bearskin hats, the tall hats that they compete for the uh, Chaos Dwarf for the title of tall hats. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Longshanks asks, what is Balthazar's favorite genre of music? So uh, the obvious answer is metal, but I think that he's a classical man. I do think he is a classical man. Like, right. although maybe he's like blasting Fortunate Son, some uh, Clearwater <laughs> revival. All right, Strachey Master the years eighteen fifty in London. You're going down Seville Road to get a new suit. Is your preferred mode of transport a war wagon or a heavy war sled? Well, eighteen fifty London. I I don't want to deal with like how much paperwork it would be for like bringing polar bears and like ice magic through the streets i'd probably like tear the streets up those polar bears might like maul a child like i i don't want to spend time in a london jail uh bleak asks what is the best unit model and i assume this is between the empire and kislev what is the coolest no. looking unit i have always been partial to the demi griff knights literally since this game was first announced and they had their empire announcement thing and the demi griff knights are shown that's always been my favorite unit model uh yeah wow it's not it's not even close it's so demi griff knights for between these two factions and my second favorite is actually from the wood elves the wild riders i just like their charging animation where they bound back and forth I, no one's asking me, but if they were, I actually really like the Griffin Legion. I think the Griffin Legion are the coolest cav in the entire game, model-wise. They do have some, some sick armor, that is true. They do. And now that they don't, like, hurt your eyes to look out with the glow, their shine is pretty good, too. Dr. Nerd asks you to add one faction to the global ban list. For anyone who doesn't know what he's talking about... On our server ranked ladder, we did add global bans. You can ban certain factions from a pool of overpowered ones, and that is currently Kislev, Zinch, Grand Cathay, Lizardmen, Bretonia, and Oh man, there's just there's no reason to add any new factions. But you, get to like... you get to pick one not based on balance, but just because you, Blood Penguin, hate them. Oh, well... Do it. Oh man, is it Skaven? Do it. Do I go Skaven or Greenskins? It's Do one it, of those coward. two. <laughs> Do it to my two one favorite factions. Two. I'm losing either way. <laughs> yeah, just just throw a dart at the board. One of those two factions. Global ban list. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? Do Skaven because I'm worse at playing the Skaven. <laughs> I'm gonna pick Zinch. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> See how you like that? All right, all right. Um, we have three questions that are very similar, so I'll go through them. Uh, from its current year, Zarina, Nariska, Nariska, and Ulrika. Uh, Nariska is the Golden Knight lady. So mm -hmm. Zarina, Golden Knight, and Ulrika, smooch, marry, and kill. I changed it to Smooch because we're a family-friendly stream. Oh, okay. Well, so sorry to all your the Godric and Felix uh, fans out here, but I, Ulrika's got to go. I'm She's got to go. She's, She's the fucking She's worst. She's a vampire. <laughs> she is the worst. I hate her in the books. Anyway. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good because she's a vampire, and I'm sorry, but no. We just gotta get rid of the vampire. So, and I think that, uh, I don't know, Zarina's the Zarina. She seems to have her life in order. Uh, I, I think that that's, I would, that's Mary. And then just hope that she never finds out about, like, Narska that one time. That's fair. I, I don't think I want to live a life of adventure with the Golden Knight. I want to settle down in an ice palace and chill with snow leopards yeah that that sounds a lot nicer 
All right. Same question from Chalk Crow. Uh, Franz, Boris Toddbringer, and Balthazar Gelt. Smooch, Mary kill. All right. Well, Balthazar Gelt, as much as I do appreciate the, the Riz, uh, he's also a wizard weirdo metal dude who potentially cheats at magics to win yeah he's so not he's not a good guy <laughs> yeah obviously we we gotta he's gotta go he's gotta go uh and then franz for like every reason of zarina but also he's just he's cool yeah. gotta gotta marry and then boris i mean this man's probably like i could you could just go out and have drinks. He could tell you all about Kazarek One Eye and his adventures. He seems like you would be a good conversationalist. Boris would be a hell of a smooch. That would be a smooch you remember for your whole life, but maybe not for great reasons. Uh, or, or you just got like you don't remember it, but you wish you had because you drank way too much. See, I was thinking it's a smooch since we're staying family friendly. It's a smooch you need a couple drinks to forget about again. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> the things he made me do. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't stop talking about peace, man. Even during. <laughs> alright, alright. Uh, and last one of that vein is from FNG. Kislev and the Empire are going through a rough patch with chaos and ask you to help them out. Which three characters are you letting crash in your garage, basement, and spare room okay, just until I was, they get back on their feet? I was actually thinking about that. So, Wolfheart first. I think that he, is, he seems like a self-sufficient person. I think that if he's... And he's also, like, humble background. I feel that he is actually likely to get himself back on his feet. He's... The whole time he's there, he's super helpful. He's nice. I I think Wolfheart would be great. And then Boris, not not Todd. I think Todd Bringer would, is exactly the kind of dude who just sit on the couch and complain about Beastmen and drink a lot. And then you try to tell him that it's been like three months and he's got to find something. And then he just starts crying about his eye again. So he gets like another three months. It'd be horrible. Ursus though. He, I feel like as long as you just, like, stop, you have to stop him from, like, going by himself to the Chaos Ways. To, like, you just, like, give him some time to, like, reflect and, like, regroup. And I think that he'll be back on his feet. He's got the drive. Same with Zarina. I think that she is, she's also someone who's just, like, driven. So if she needed something, you just like, she would have like a three month plan and then be good. Dude, on the other end of the spectrum, Kastaltan, in my opinion, be the worst person for this because he would rope you into so much shit you didn't sign up for. Like, my brother, I have told the police they could fuck themselves <laughs> and you're with me. And it's like, what? I brought all of my cultists here. Why are you doing this? We're doing a sermon tonight in your living room. Stop. Yeah, Castalton just invites people over like that you don't know and like are hella shady. He would... And you're like, well, why are they here? And they're like, well, you didn't want to join my cult. So I made the... my own. <laughs> He would I get back on his friends. feet. He'd get back on his feet immediately, but that does not mean he's leaving. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, promise, um... let's go bowling. <laughs> Nico! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. We're going into the final round of real questions. There's no silliness left. Uh, Olaf the Moose asked, what is your favorite Empire or Kislev matchup? Just your favorite matchup but not in terms of being easy or winnable, just, like, for fun, I like this matchup. For Empire, I think my favorite matchups are the, the High Elves and... Skaven, Skaven, Probably Skaven, Skaven. High Elves and uh, Norska. They're both, uh, High Elves particularly are a 
matchup that you can you can do almost anything. Both of them have like very uh, dynamic rosters, so it's a lot about like bringing armies that are capable of fighting everything. So like you can be you have to be afraid of like dragon lords, uh, armored cavalry like dragon princes, just a ton of spearmen and archers. And they've got to be afraid of, like, war wagons, empire knights, uh, hand gunners, demigriff knights. So it just leads to a lot of, like, you're both building armies against each other, and it's not going to look the same any time that you play the matchup. And that just makes it, like, it's a very, it's an interesting matchup. Norska is just, I like to also play Rush, and then just like slam my army into Norska because you know that Norska is not going to do like weird weird stuff against you usually like maybe a couple skirmish cap but you can just smash your army into their army and have fun all right um Bahrain there it is I was looking for this a while ago I couldn't find it Bahrain asks what would it take for the non-caster Empire heroes to be worth picking? Ah, uh, so that's that's hard because all of them, none of them are terrible. They just run into the problem of the Empire is a faction that you want to get like squeeze the most out of your money, and they just always hit the cutting floor if you're when you're making an army like the empire captain you there are people uh builds that use balthazar gelton two empire captains as like a mini goon squad for uh sniping characters and that can be fine uh they're pretty cheap even on their pegasus they're only 825 so they're less than an empire knight uh, and they're they're fine. They're just nothing special is their biggest weakness. The witch hunter is his biggest problem is accusation is just a confused ability. <laughs> it reduces missile resistance, physical resistance, melee defense, and armor. So it can't decide if it's a melee debuff or a range debuff and settles for being mid at both. Now this used to be a spirit leech, and when it was, it was far better. But it was also kind of dumb because then you'd bring Balthazar Kelt and Witch Hunter Captain and just like click a, a character until they died. Uh, what I would do for them is make Accusation an ability that is makes more sense. Uh, probably I would make it a slow. A, like a slow that if you just had it so that it reduces missile resist, reduces armor, and slows the target, then they could be pretty good for supporting your range units for shoot that thing. But as it is right now, the Witch Hunter Captain is just... He just doesn't deal a lot of damage. And uh, he has problems with missing with his pistol all the time, which is really annoying, but... Moving on to the Warrior Priest, who is by far the most takeable of the uh, ones. That's high price. Of the heroes, yeah. The Hammer of Sigmar and Shield of Faith are both decent abilities. Uh, Banner of the Eternal Flame giving fire attacks is really nice if you want to just ride him with the knights. Um, his... What I would do for Warrior Priests to make them more viable is... I would turn Benediction, but it is a 8 leadership buff right now. I would give it an ITP aura. I think that that would make them a lot more viable uh, if they gave immune to psychology to units around them. 
further invalidating the Knights of Moor, but go on. Yes, the Knights of Moor would require a rework at this point. <laughs> no, we love the Knights of Moor. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that I'm sure someone does out there. That person is wrong. <laughs> All right. Understood on the heroes. Uh, ba ba ba. With no balance changes other than just pure cost, what is a fair price point for the steam tank and Kislev cavalry stead? All right. The steam tank, it is fine. Its price is fine. The problem with the steam tank has nothing to do with its price. It's the fact that it has 10 melee defense. He didn't say melee defense. He said price. But you can't nerf its, like, it's priced well. If you price it any more, it gets into being like, this is an 160 gold, or 160 armor terror causing unbreakable monster. It will be, it, if it even costs something like 1700, it is extremely powerful. Um, just because the Empire can bring so much stuff with it. And so, 1700 is probably, if in a vacuum, nothing else, 1700 is probably a good price for it. But, and I will stress this, and I know that it has no pricing, and not including price, the, or only the price. The price is not the problem. Price the 10 is melee problem. defenses. Price is the problem. Now, uh, for Kislev Cavalry, again, and we already went over this, the price is not the problem, it's Glorious Charge. Glorious Charge is the problem with this unit. Um, it's... Uh, I mean, a fair price for it right now. It should cost, like, probably as much as, a, like, a Wild Rider. Because it's just better than a Wild Rider in every metric. Oh, the Wing Lancer. Yeah, okay. Wing Lancer. Yeah. So going on to Kislev Cavalry. So a Wing Lancer should cost at least as much as a Wild Rider. But it it shouldn't. It should cost 850 and then have its... It should actually get its price reduced and then lose the first part of glorious charge that's the best thing that can happen for the winged lancer but if i was going to just price it as it is now in a vacuum i would say at least 1050. fair oh great what would you change about this lamb sauce? Would you change about existing Empire units to improve their meta state? I feel like we hammered that home, but I just wanted to acknowledge the question happened. Um, All right. So, uh, yeah, I can hit, like, three units at once. So, Flagellants, melee defense buff. That's really what they need. Melee defense buff for the steam tank, too. Um, or a like a slight price decrease for flagellants and uh sigmar sons if this thing didn't cost two spearmen even if it's 575 it might be wrought um and then uh war wagons on the opposite like make them a little bit uh less oppressive just make them a little bit slower put them to like 60 speed instead of 66. gotcha um yeah. Uh, Michael asked, how can the Sigmar Priest Hero and Arch Lectors be used by players? What would you change to make them better? We did just touch on that with the hero thing. Yes. Uh, the, what, that's the benediction is what I would use to make them better. For using them, just stick them very close to the cavalry. The uh, Hammer of Sigmar is a very strong melee uh attack buff and shield of faith is a very powerful defensive buff uh it also works really well with healing because the shield of faith can help keep models themselves alive so just if you are using it just honestly stick it in a command group with the cavalry and ride it with them uh use the buffs when they get into combat and uh it should be, it should work pretty well. It's just a little expensive is its only problem. Mm -hmm. 
Lucinia asks, what would you have to do to make Ice Guard good? <laughs> um. So. Either make it so that. I mean, the problem with Ice Guard is just the unit. The conceit behind the unit is never going to be good. Like, what they need is just armor piercing missiles, but that would make them ridiculous. Uh, and that would just, they would just be sisters of Averlorn that are slightly worse because they don't have the melee defense. Compared, they uh, have already reduced their price by like a hundred gold since it started. If they reduced it by another hundred gold, they probably would still be worse than the Akshinas. Just because Ak they're paying, you're paying for like all the wrong stuff. You're paying for magical frostbite anti-infantry attack on the sword variant, and armor-piercing anti-large magical uh, frostbite attacks, melee attacks on the uh, halberd variant, and which you just don't want them in melee. Like this is the the problem with most hybrid units is that. Putting them in melee is just wasting their potential as a ranged unit. So, uh, you could just buy something like the Akshina, which costs 150 less, and you get stock, which helps them stay alive, and helps get their models into shooting range without, so that they can deal full damage. You could, the easiest buff would be just increase their range to make them like substantially further range, like 180 range, but they'd still be not great. Lasaurus asks, do you think the Streltsy are the best mortal handgun unit in the game? No. Why? The, the best by far in terms of single handgun unit would be the silver bullets. They're by far the best. Uh, Streltsy, you pay for, again, the wrong stuff. The 70 armor is great. The HP is also pretty good, but paying for melee stats and armor piercing uh, weapon strength is super rough. And uh, they're also extremely expensive at 850 gold. The Buyer Blood does help them a lot, especially if they're getting compromised. But the Silver Bullets, you pay for only the good stuff. You pay for magical uh, attacks that have better reload. And they also actually gain one point of AP over normal handgunners, which is really nice. And they dock so they can't be shot on the approach and they can ambush units that come in uh and before i would say that the silver bullets are the best and then i would go over and say that thunderers are better than streltsy too you pay for you get shields which are super applicable versus you get shields and spell resistance which is also just great for keeping these gunners alive and at high shooting capacity. And if we're considering like iron hail gunners to be gun, uh, mortal gun units as well, I would put them and probably uh, iron uh, infernal uh, guard with fire glaives. All of those I would put before Streltsy. Damn. Now, that's not to say that Streltsy are bad. Like, all these gun units are good. But I would not say that Streltsy are even close to the best handgun unit in the game. You just see them a lot because they're on a roster that is really good at using them. Nurgle's PA and Twilight Harbinger are asking, as a prominent Empire main, what is your opinion of the current version of the Luminarch, and when would you recommend using it? Do you think it is overpowered? Well, definitely no to that last one. Um, it is, it's a fine, it's in a good place in terms of it 
does exactly what it wants to. It's very, very powerful at sniping single models. Uh, but if I was to say, when would you use it? I would say uh, never, unfortunately. It's, it, it's just not tanky at all. It's extremely squishy, and it's very good at lord sniping, but like so are the silver bullets, and it's no it's no tankier than the silver bullets, and it's also a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's not to say that I think that it needs buffs. I think that it is in a good place. It's just and I think that buffing it would just make it so that it's very annoying because it is just a very annoying unit to deal with. But I, in a compet, like you can bring in a lot of matchups, but competitively, I would not recommend it. Pikmin202, the best, asks the question on everyone's mind How do we make the Frostworm playable? Uh, make its model work. Stop. <laughs> CA, stop tripling down on this Grand Cathay Dragon model. It's bad. It's really fucking bad. Like, yeah. I mean, if you wanted, like, how do you use it right now? Um, put, like, Zarina on it, and then just use her to cause terror in matchups that you're gonna probably win anyways, but terror is nice. So, like, against Skaven. Yep, against Skaven. Feels good. Like, you're not going to actually hit anything. It doesn't, but it also doesn't matter if it's not hitting anything, if it just is spooky and everything is dying around it. Jace the Mindfucker says, How do you know when to take Streltsy slash handgunners over crossbows or archers? More of the unit type than the specific unit. So, it's generally uh about what you're trying to kill in each matchup uh handgunners like high armor uh units handgunners are better versus and also if you need things to die quickly so uh if you're afraid of a big dragon monster then Guns are going to be a lot more effective at dealing with that than uh, archers are. Whereas if you're afraid of a bunch of enemy archers or a bunch of uh, infantry that might uh, penetrate in or just like very lightly armored uh, trolls or monsters such as that, then archers are going to be more effective. Archers tend to be more capable of shooting as well just because they can lob their arrows over the front line so you don't need to position them as well. And them just being spread out on the Empire roster at least uh, makes it so that they don't get completely destroyed by like a pendulum. Gotcha. Tequila Sunset and Hanadins ask this joint question. When do you take Empire Knights, Reichsguard, Knights of Blazing Sun, or Demigriff Knights? So, like, what's, you know, Empire Knights are right. generally good. Maybe switch up to Reichsguard if you're running into blank. All right, so Empire Knights are... You generally always want to have some Empire Knights. They're really good at stopping enemy charges. They don't win most engagements, but they are essential to the Empire roster at just guarding against units breaking into your backline or uh, diving into enemy backlines. They have a ton of armor, they have a decent charge bonus, they're just a very solid unit. Reichsguard, if you wanted five Empire Knights, you could take a Reichsguard. Um, generally, I don't bring these guys, they're just, there's, they don't do enough more than an uh, Empire Knight to warrant the, uh, what, 300 gold more that they cost. They cost a full Spearman more than 
so they're just not generally worth. Knights of the Blazing Sun, any matchup that you want to really punch really hard with your charge bonus, these guys have an amazing 78 charge bonus. Or you're afraid of enemy spell casting being the primary way of them killing your knights. So against Zinch or any matchup where you're afraid of getting knights fate of Bunad, they have a 25% spell resist. So uh, they're really good if you're in like against wood elves, against green skins, anytime that you're going to use them to charge down enemy uh, units. And demigriff knights are, if you want to, I usually use the demigriff knights with halberds. Demigriff knights in general have an, uh, also an amazing charge bonus, and this would just be if you want, uh, you're going against armored enemies and you want the charge bonus. Uh, if you're not bringing Karl Franz to buff them, the demigriff knights with lances are generally just have better general combat stats than the demigriff knights with halberds, so you should stick with them. I generally like to bring Karl Franz to support them, so I like to go with the halberd variant. Uh, and this is any time that you're uh, afraid of your enemies having, you want to win the cavalry game and you think that your enemy is going to have a bunch of uh, heavily armored cavalry then you just bring demigriff knights and support them with Karl Franz and they can just uh, one at a time cut down every enemy cavalry unit in the field Diamond in chat quickly asked what do you think of the watchmen of the night the uh, armored Kassar Arwar I think that they're <clears throat> super neat uh, they are surprisingly high melee defense for a anti-infantry two-sword unit, so they're pretty nice. Uh, they're just a little expensive and super not necessary to ever bring. But that doesn't make them bad. <laughs> it just means that the roster is extremely strong and does not require their services. Cyrus asked the same sort of question about the Empire Cav, but he's saying when to take the Skirmish Cav. So the Pistoliers, Outriders, and Grenade Launchers. So Pistoliers have just suffered in Game 3. They just don't deal that much damage, and they don't have that much ammunition. So generally, uh, it's not worth taking them. Anytime that you're doing a kite build, uh, Outriders are just fantastic. They uh, can reposition very quickly. They deal a ton of damage. And uh, they are very squishy, so you need to be very careful with them and uh, not let them get shot. They can deal uh, dish out a ton of damage. The Outriders with grenade launchers are super good at clearing infantry. This is what... But they are also very squishy. Uh, if Empire gets... Uh, infantry version of this they would be disgusting but currently these are the best infantry clearing unit on the empire roster you can bring them in most matchups if you would like but they are again very dangerous because they're very squishy all right three questions left Lasaurus asks what's the most egregious power creep on the kislev roster compared to the empire he was thinking of halberdiers versus kislev warriors when that question was asked i'm guessing it's glorious charge yeah, obviously, yeah, for sure. I mean, Wing Lancers versus Empire Knights and Griffin Legion versus Reich's card, just that glorious charge makes them completely insane. All right. Sigmar asks, what is the best way to counter Kislev when you are playing as Empire? So if you're loading up into Kislev versus Empire, what are you doing? Oh, um... This used to be a, a more obvious answer. Like... War wagons used to be slightly better, just because you could uh, try to pick off the enemy cavalry. Uh, huntsmen are huntsmen were and still are pretty decent against the roster. Uh, in fact, I would probably say huntsmen are better against the roster because you can generally assume that some Kislev warriors are going to be brought, and they're really squishy to the arrow fire. It's it's a very, very hard matchup now, just because the Kislev Cavalry is so strong. Uh, 
the best way to deal with it is probably just a lot of spearmen with shields, a lot of halberds, and uh, a couple knights to stop up at least some of their charges and just try to catch as many of their knights in bad fights as possible and protect your archers as long as possible as well. And the final question of the night, Nurgle's PA and Bavarat joint asked, what makes the Empire or Kislev cooler than Beastmen or Lizardmen? Why do you like playing them? So, I actually kind of started the stream with this. So, that's Capstone. cool. But, yeah, I, I like the... Uh, when you build an army and it just... It all works together to do something. So, the Empire Knights aren't going to entirely carry the game by themselves because they just they don't compare to something like the Britannian uh grail knights the empire uh, state troop front line is not going to overpower an orc front line and the empire huntsmen aren't going to outshoot the high elves but when it everything comes together and all of the pieces are working together it just, it makes it feel like uh, both you planned uh, your army well and you played your army well. Whereas something like the Beastmen or the Greenskins is a lot of times just you go, you surround the enemy army and then you click everything in and you just hope that it worked. All right, taking like, some taking some shots there that I feel weren't weren't deserved, but okay. I mean, <laughs> that's fine. I just. Like, my favorite uh, parts of games is when your army just, you watch as your units start rallying and you start, like, reforming units and seeing what you've lost and what you still have and, like, deciding how you're going to try to win the game with what you still have on available to you. But, yeah. Uh, Man, if, if you like rallying, you should get Skaven. <laughs> Oh, You're going to spend most of your game rallying those guys. Yeah, Skaven is not so much as, like, getting a second wind as it is, like, uh, hyperventilating as your army just, like, <laughs> decides whether or not it's going to come back. And then before it even gets back into the fight, it's just turning around again. You're like, no, other way. <laughs> My gold chevron storm vermin sword and shield running off the map with almost a thousand HP, but just negative one leadership. Well, I see Blackguard of Nagarond fighting to literally the last model. 16 HP. It was on today's stream. 16 HP, and he had 17 leadership. And I'm like, cool faction, guys! Yeah, it's... Skaven is one of those, uh... It feels like I'm corralling my units more than I'm, like, commanding them. Which has, I suppose, in flavor, but it's still painful. Skaven is... Being a Skaven made is such a love-hate relationship, you're like... I want to like this. I want to. But you all piss me off every goddamn day. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if you just stood there and didn't route every five seconds, I think we win this game. Just, like, please, just just stop for five seconds. I netted the Hippogriff Knights in front of you, Rattling Guns. Fire! Listen, half of us are going to fire, and half of us that are firing are going to hit. That's the best we could do. <laughs> Why is that the best you can do? <laughs> Honestly, that sounds pretty good. That's that's a better hit ratio than I would be expecting. Ugh. Yeah, it'd be nice. Giselles, dude. Giselles are the only unit that works well in the shooting category, and they're countered by Fate of Buna, which like every faction in the freaking game can bring. So just have Fate of Buna in case I take my only good shooting unit. Oh, okay. Now we enter... It's It's been two, two hours and 15 minutes. The Empire Kislev stream has ended, and now it is time to just talk Skaven for us tonight. Let's go. <laughs> Three more hours. Just Skaven talking. Huh. Uh, no. What are they going to do with Queek? I don't know. I, I have so many... I've presented three different ideas that would make Queek, like, viable but not toxic, and I bet they're not going to take any of them. If anything, if he ever gets a change, I guarantee you it's a fucking Mortis engine. 
<laughs> it's just like, yeah, just give him Warp poison. shard armor now just it kills units that come into contact with him. Just their models die out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, wait. He has the warp shard armor. Like, that's his lord lore thing. What does that warlock engineer have? The warp stone armor. What the hell is the difference? Uh, one's a lot better than the other. I know, but, like, actually, what's the difference between a warp shard and a warp stone armor? But okay, escaping. Have everything just be the same. That's fine. It's whatever. All right. Any, any parting thoughts, my friend, or are you ready to skedaddle? Uh, parting thoughts. Uh, Empire is the, the best faction, and uh, I think that everyone should be an Empire main, but not bring war wagons. That's pretty based. I like Empire. They're fun. I don't really use war wagons, though. Maybe that's yeah. why I lose all the time. That would be my my challenge to any Empire main out there is to not bring any war wagons ever again. And then my parting thoughts would be everybody who's not an Empire main should try the Empire. And you can bring war wagons if you want. But then once you become a main, just stop. Hmm. Once you under you feel the power, then you can like you need to learn to let it go. I wish Skaven had a unit that was so powerful I could see if I could play without it. Uh, if every Skaven main stopped using Globideers, I mean, I would be a happier person. What would we have? <laughs> we would have know, nothing. My blood pressure would probably be in a better spot. Dude, I was playing Captain Tealus before this. Uh, I talked to you about the, the Scarbrand game, because I was not salty at all. But... Dude, Skaven are so fucking sad. He ran Orc Borba Biggins into my Rat Ogres on top of Eshin Triads, killed the Rat Ogres, half health the Triads, and then just decided to leave and still had, like, half his HP. And I'm like, how was that a bad trade for me? <laughs> You're sitting on Armor Sundering Alberts. I hate this fact. Yeah, they... Sometimes I feel like they completely shred units that are on top of them and then other times i just watch as they do they do nothing and then uh the unit walks away and the ashen triads have lost half their hp and done zero damage yeah yeah i don't know why sometimes they feel so strong i mean maybe it's just i'm running into like the illusion of the the, the ashen triad thing uh, ROR spawns, and I'm dumb, but I don't think that's the case. Scarbrand's great versus everything, plain pasta. You don't want to open this Pandora's box. You know what? Fuck it. We're on stream. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see how great Scarbrand is. Let's see. Let's see how amazing Scarbrand is. <laughs> I'm going to triple fast forward to that T-pose I was talking about that lost me the entire fucking game. Just to just to yell at this person in chat. Just to yell at them. <laughs> you can leave if you don't want that. That's fine. <laughs> you, you've given enough. <laughs> oh, God. It was so tilting. I had it. I had the whole game. All right, seven minutes, ten seconds. Not going to make a video about it. Definitely not. <laughs> you marked the time. I did. I watched it like three times. Because <laughs> I was That's just like, dedication. I was like, what could I have done better in this situation? Oh hey, that looked kind of messed up. Let's reopen the replay and go back to seven minutes ten seconds. See what happened there. Oh hey, that was pretty messed up. Let's watch it again to just make sure I'm angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I am very angry about it. <laughs> All right, Scarrow's doing great. He's getting rampage, getting shot. And then he's gonna run, run around. We're at four minutes. It's three minutes away from the disaster that happens. Ba, ba, da, ba, da, bam, 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 bam. Two minutes left. Ba, ba, ba. We need a faster fast forward than 
four times speed. Okay, coming in close. So Zazel sitting up there, and uh, Scarbrand standing on a big old pile of his own troops. And the last of Zazel's troops are about to rout. Oh, snag that bitch in a rampage! Let's go, Scarbrand, get him! Get Scarbrand, get him! Scar, Scarbrand, you gotta, buddy, you gotta swing. Huh? Buddy, you gotta, you gotta swing at anything. Swing at a single thing that is around you, Scarbrand. Scarbrand. Do something! Scarbrand! <laughs> no! And he's just standing there! He's just standing there! Well, whatever. At least it wasn't... My, at least it wasn't a close actually game. noise canceled. <laughs> at least it wasn't a close game, Blood Penguin. At least I didn't need one hit on Azazel or something to win the whole game. At least that's not true. Oh, wow. Army losses is pretty close. Court's probably going to win this one, guys. We didn't need Scarbrand to not shit his pants on live TV. We're going to be just fine without fucking Scarbrand. <laughs> oh, if Azazel was dead, this would be over. But whatever, at least we... Ah, shit. We lost. Because fucking Azazel lived. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I've actually gotten over it. I've moved on. It's not gonna haunt me in my sleep tonight. I'm gonna sleep great. I'm gonna sleep like a baby with a fucking bulging ulcer in my stomach as I think of fucking Scarbrand. <laughs> Tomorrow I'll shit blood, but that's fine. God, I hate him. Either way, the blood god is pleased. <laughs> God damn it, Korn. <laughs> I love their, like, even in their lore, they're as self-defeating as they are in Warhammer 3, where it's like, why does Korn suck? Yeah, he doesn't care where the blood flows from. <laughs> like, it's fine. <sighs> All right. For real, thank you so much for your time and the fun interview. You are a great person, as per oh. usual. Oh, well, thank you. And, uh, yeah. Congrats on winning the faction you for war. Having me. Congrats on oh winning God. the next faction war with your overbuffed empire. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see. Was, I wasn't thinking about them before, but now those those grenades, I'm already I'm planning, I'm scheming. <laughs> it's been those globadiers have been on the wrong side for so long. <laughs> or they'd be like in my hands. You get the Gisales and my globe. You just take the Skaven roster. Yeah, just become what I I swore to destroy. Oh, these globes are pretty fun when I have them. <laughs> All right, take care. Man. No, I'll probably just get mad when they don't throw. Yeah, and then you can make some boss content with it. It's a good clickbait. All right, thank y'all. Bye. Bye.